Welcome to the next review video for the May 2019 IBESS exam. Um, I think all of you guys by now have probably already started your exam period. Today is Friday, May 17th. I know that there's been the history exams, there's been the bio exams, and I hope that everyone is getting enough sleep and feeling confident about their performance. Um, your IB exam for ESS is coming up really soon, so today I want to go over three general environmental problems that I feel like can be used in a lot of different ways on your exam papers. The problems that we're going to discuss are eutrophication, deforestation, and overfishing. So let's get started. The first problem that we'll go over is eutrophication. This came up a lot on the exam two years ago in May, and I just feel like there's always some kind of a question either about the process of it or an, using an example of it as a situation where humans are impacting the environment. And I think it's an easy thing to explain relatively quickly if you understand what it is. So the basic overview of eutrophication, it's caused because of an excess of nitrates or phosphates in the water. That can happen for a few different reasons. The most common thing that's happened is human produced fertilizers wash off into water sources and that brings uh, nitrates and phosphates into the water, but you also see it with increased sewage runoff in areas like, think like Delhi and India and really super populated third world um, countries, big cities where they don't have a good sewage management system. So what happens when these uh, nutrients get into the water is they increase plant life. Like when you think about fertilizers, that's what they're supposed to do, right? So if there's a bunch of fertilizer runoff in the water, it's going to increase plant life in the water. And this will eventually lead to what's called an algal bloom. And sometimes this isn't, like at first it doesn't seem like a bad thing because there's just a bunch more plant life in the water. But what happens eventually is those algal blooms block the light from being able to reach the benthic organizations, the bottom dwelling organisms of the water. So life below the surface starts to die off. And you still have this really concentrated bloom of life up at the surface where all of this increased plant matter is supporting more fish and the fish on the surface are multiplying and eating up all the algae that's up there. But the problem is there's no foundation for the system. There's no deep dwelling plants that are providing oxygen for the whole thing to keep working. So once those fish eat off all of this algae, the whole system dies off. There's no oxygen to create new plants. And so once the surface plants have died off and the benthic dwelling organisms are already dead, you get what's called a dead zone, where there's not any life supported. The biggest example of where this is going on right now is in the Gulf of Mexico in the United States, um, and that's due to fertilizer runoff from the Mississippi River. Because And you can see it on a map, or like even really from an airplane. At the bottom of the Mississippi River, where it drains into the Gulf of Mexico, there's this huge zone that's a totally different color of water because of the algal bloom. And small dead zones are starting to appear in that water. Um, so this comes up in terms of uh, current human impacts on the environment, it comes up in terms of the health of water systems, and it also comes up because you can talk about positive feedback. This thing of an algal bloom spiraling out of control is a good example of positive feedback. Um, so I hope that is a helpful um, description of one environmental problem. Let's move on to deforestation. Deforestation, one of the syllabus points that touches on it is the idea of soil fertility and soil erosion in topic five. Um, deforestation is a huge contributor to both the decreased soil fertility and increased soil erosion because when you take all the trees and plants out of an area, it does two things. The first is, down here in point number three, it decreases the organic matter and nutrients, especially carbon and nitrates that are available for the soil. So when soil is trying to fix up more, uh, more nutrients and become healthy, that stuff isn't available. So you decrease soil fertility when you cut down everything that's on the top of the soil and take it away because decomposing organic matter is where soil gets its nutrients from. 
You increase soil erosion because a lot of soil is held in place by the root systems of plants. And once the plants have died off, the root system doesn't have anything that it's holding on to and soil is much more likely to wash away if you have like a big flood or a serious weather event. Um, we use deforestation for both resource production, stuff like paper, and obviously food production. A really good example of a deforestation situation that's getting quickly out of control is palm oil plantations in Indonesia. They're clear-cutting huge swaths of rainforest in Indonesia to make room for palm oil plantations. And palm oil is in a lot of different common first world food products as an additive. Um, it's like a stabilizer in a lot of really nice mouthfeel food products like Nutella is a really good example and some peanut butters and a lot of different kinds of like potato chips and things that are sort of like Moorish feeling in your mouth. A lot of them have palm oil in them. So deforestation can be useful to talk about in terms of its impact on soil fertility and soil erosion also as a human-caused environmental problem, also as something that people can try to create legislation to combat. Um, and you can talk about sort of like the pros and cons of trying to deal with legislation, the idea that even if legislation is created, if there's not enforcement, then uh, the legislation really has no teeth and it's not going to be followed. So there's a lot of different angles that you can come at to bring deforestation into one of your exam questions. Um, the last thing that we'll talk about is overfishing. The most significant direct point from the syllabus about overfishing is this idea of discussing with reference to a case study, the controversial harvesting of a named species. The case study that I always use in my class is cod fishing in Newfoundland, Canada. And in the 1990s, that fishery collapsed completely. It's a really famous environmental case study because not only did the ocean health get really severely impacted, but the local economy was based really only on the cod fishing industry and the local economy in Newfoundland, Canada shut down in 1992. There was like a 90% drop in jobs and everyone left the area. It's like, a, it's still sort of like a deserted area to this day. Um, so overfishing has a really significant impact on the local economy, like not managing a resource correctly, has bad economic effects. And it also has a really significant impact on general health in the oceans. You could talk about trophic levels here too. Like when you take out a whole trophic level, it's hard to ensure the health of the rest of a system. Um, all right, so in terms of general environmental problems, I think those three things, eutrophication, deforestation, and overfishing, can be useful in a number of different ways as you go about studying for your exam. And if there's anything else that you want me to review, I'm going to try to do a couple more review videos before the exam, so make sure to put in the comments down below the things that you would like me to go over. And if you want to take a look at the whole course that I have organized, I know some of you guys have bought it already, and I'm so excited to hear what you think about it. I hope it's helping you out. Um, if you want to take a look at all of the rest of the resources that I've created, unique IB exams with answer keys that I've made, re uh, worksheet reviews on every topic in the syllabus, the link to buy that course on LearnSys is in the video description. Otherwise, happy studying. Let me know how it's going. And I hope we'll see each other at least one more time before your exam. See you next time.